This is Coding Math, Episode 32, Line Intersections, Part 1. Today we'll be talking about lines, specifically how to tell if two lines cross each other, and if they do, at what point. We'll be dealing exclusively in two dimensions here. Line intersections in 3D are extremely rare unless you purposely plan them out. But in 2D, any two non-parallel lines will eventually cross. And I might as well state that we're dealing with Euclidean geometry meaning there's no curved space here, because that's generally what you'd be dealing with in your programs. Now at the end of this video, you'll have a function that can determine the exact point where two lines intersect. In the follow-up video, we'll deal with parallel lines, collinear lines, and line segments, and look at some of the potential uses for some of this. If you just want the function, you can just download the code and use the function, but you can just as easily dig up many such functions on the net, and I assume you're here to learn a bit more about how this works. I'm going to go through things step by step, but there's quite a bit of algebra going on here. Just rearranging terms in various equations, and combining multiple equations in order to solve for a variable. Might get a bit confusing, but you do have the option of going through it as many times as you need to. So first of all, some definitions. When I talk about a line, I'm talking about a straight line that runs infinitely in both directions. We'll also be talking about line segments. This is a portion of a line that goes between two points. There's also a ray which begins at a point and extends infinitely in a single direction, but we won't be dealing with rays in this video. Now I stated that any two non-parallel lines will eventually intersect, but that's not the case with line segments. There are all kinds of ways that non-parallel line segments cannot intersect. Next, let's talk about how we define a line mathematically. First, we can define it by specifying two points. With this, you can make a line segment that runs between the two, or extend it past the points to define a full line. Here we have a point at 2, 2, and another one at 6, 4. Those four numbers define that line. Another way of defining a line is the slope-intercept form, which is an equation in the form of y equals mx plus b. Here, m refers to the slope of the line, and b is the y-intercept. You can see on the graph here that the line crosses the y-axis at exactly y equals 1. So b, the y-intercept, is 1. The slope is the ratio of the change on the y-axis for a given change on the x-axis. Here we're moving one unit on the y-axis for every two units we move on the x-axis. So the slope is 1 over 2, or 0.5. So visually we can determine that the equation for this line is y equals 0.5x plus 1. But when you're coding, you need to figure these things out mathematically, not visually. So given two points on a line, you can convert this into the slope-intercept formula. First, you calculate the slope with the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So here we say 4 minus 2 over 6 minus 2 which is 2 divided by 4, or 1 half, or 0. 0.5. And this gives us y equals 0.5x plus b. Now we can plug in the x and y of either one of those points, say 2, 2. This gives us 2 equals 0. 0.5 times 2 plus b, or 2 equals 1 plus b, or b equals 1. And that corresponds to the y-intercept we can see visually. So this again gives us the final formula, y equals 0.5x plus 1, which exactly defines this line and only this line. Now another way of specifying a line mathematically is called the standard form. This is an equation in the form ax plus by equals c. In this formula, a, b, and c are all integers. a and b should not be zero, and a should be positive. Given the slope-intercept form we just calculated, y equals 0.5x plus 1, we can rearrange that to write minus 0.5x plus y equals 1. Note that by moving the x term with a slope in it to the opposite side of the equation, it becomes negative. This is important. We'll come back to that in a moment. Now a is minus 0.5, which is neither positive or an integer. So to get the standard form, we can multiply both sides by minus 2. And then we get 1x minus 2y equals minus 2, as the standard form equation for this line. To test it, enter one of the known points, say 6, 4 in there, 
and you get 1 times 6 minus 2 times 4 equals minus 2. Or 6 minus 8 equals minus 2. This checks out. Now, another way to generate this form without going through the slope intercept form is as follows A can be calculated by subtracting y1 from y2, and B is x1 minus x2. Now, these correspond to the numerator and denominator of the slope ratio we just looked at. But notice that x is reversed, making it negative. This corresponds to the fact that we had to move the mx term to the opposite side of the equation, making it negative. So with our points, this gives us a equals 4 minus 2, or 2, b equals 2 minus 6, or minus 4. Then we can plug those numbers into the standard form equation, and we get 2x minus 4y equals c. And plugging in the x and y of one of the points into that, say 2, 2, we can solve for c. 2 times 2 minus 4 times 2 equals c or 4 minus 8 equals c, so c equals minus 4. This gives us the final formula of 2x minus 4y equals minus 4, which is reducible to the original formula we got, 1x minus 2y equals minus 2. Now realize that this method will not always give you the standard form that follows all the rules. a may wind up being negative, and a, b, and c might wind up as non-integers. This would cause you to fail a math test, but nevertheless, the numbers will work fine in the calculations we do. So now that we have a way of defining a line, let's move on to finding the intersection. First of all, we need two lines that intersect, like this. We'll call these points P0, P1, P2, and P3. And realize that even though I'm just drawing line segments here, we're still talking about infinite length lines. So we'll have two equations, one for each line. We'll use the 1 and 2 subscripts to keep them separate. We have a1x plus b1y equals c1, and a2x plus b2y equals c2. Now, because these two lines intersect, they share a single xy point. In other words, there will be a single value for x and y that will be on both of these lines and will satisfy both of these equations. So we just need to solve for x and then solve for y. But you can't solve a single equation with multiple variables for just one of those variables. But if you have two equations that both contain the same two variables, you can combine them in order to solve for one of those variables. So let's do some crazy algebra here. What we want to do is to combine these two equations so that we cancel out either the x or y terms. Let's first solve for x, so we need to get rid of y. First, we'll multiply both sides of the first equation by b2. This gives us a1b2x plus b1b2y equals b2c1. Then we'll multiply both sides of the second equation by b1, giving us a2b1x plus b1b2y equals b1c2. Now we can actually subtract the second equation from the first one. In this case, the second term, b1, b2y, will cancel out, leaving us with a1, b2x minus a2, b1x equals b2, c1 minus b1, c2. Then we can extract x from the first part, giving us x times a1, b2 minus a2, b1 equals b2c1 minus b1c2. Then divide, and you'll have the final equation to calculate the x of the intersection, all based on the original four points of the two lines. We'll save this over here, and then we can do the same thing to isolate the y's, multiplying the first equation by a2 and the second by a1. I'm going to swap these around this time, just because the subtraction will work out better that way. So we get a1, a2x plus a1, b2y equals a1, c2. And a1, a2x plus a2, b1y equals a2, c1. When we subtract, this time the a1, b2x's cancel out, leaving us with a1, b2y minus a2, b1y equals a1, c2 minus a2, c1. 
You extract the Y's and then divide. And now we have one equation for X and one for Y. This will be the intersection of those two lines. Now notice that the denominator a1b2 minus a2b1 is the same in both equations, which we can then use to optimize our code a bit. Now we just need to take the x's and y's from the original four points and use them to get the a's, b's, and c's for each line. Once we have those, we can get the x and y, which will be the intersection point. Clear? Yeah, sure it is. If you need to, go through this a few more times until it makes a bit more sense. Trust me, it took me going through this many times on my own before it started to look like anything more than alphabet soup. Now when you're ready, we'll write some code and see if that helps. For now, we'll ignore line segments and parallel lines and just try to figure out the point of the intersection. Then we'll go back in and beef it up. We'll start with the basic canvas template so we can actually draw some lines and mark the intersection to see if we got it right. So we'll need a function that takes four points. We could structure this a number of ways. It could take eight parameters, four x's and four y's, or it could take four point objects, or it could take two line objects, each of which would have points defined somehow. I'll go with the middle ground and use four points. One line will go from P0 to P1, and the other from P2 to P3, exactly like we diagrammed before. Now we're going to want to take those pairs of points and represent them as an equation in the ax plus by equals c standard form. Actually, we really just need to find a, b, and c values for each line. Let's get them for the first line. a1 will be p1y minus p0y. b1 will be p0x minus p1x. Remember, the x values are reversed and C1 will be calculated with standard form using one of the point's values. So C1 will be A1 times P0X plus B1 times P0Y. Then we can do the same thing with P2 and P3 to get A2, B2, and C2. Now we can get the X and the Y of the intersection. First remember that the denominator in both of those equations is the same, so we can pre-calculate that saying denominator equals a1 times b2 minus a2 times b1. From here, since we're ignoring all the edge cases, we can just return a point directly. The x and y will be calculated with the formulas we just derived. So we return an object with the x of b2 times c1 minus b1 times c2 divided by the denominator, and y of a1 times c2 minus a2 times c1, again divided by denominator. There we go, let's test it. The file up here is all set up with a canvas. Let's make a few points right at the top here. I'm creating these so that they purposely intersect somewhere in the middle. Now we can go ahead and just draw a line from P0 to P1, and P2 to P3. And let's make sure we're doing okay so far. Yep, we have two intersecting lines. Now we can say intersect equals line intersect P0, P1, P2, and P3. That should return a point that defines the intersection of those two lines. Let's just draw a circle there. And we test that. And what do you know? Perfect. Try changing the points around and see that the circle is drawn in the right place. In fact, I've created another file that you can check out from the Git repo. It's called maininteractive.js, and it allows you to drag the points that make up the lines. Here you can see that it's all working pretty well. Of course, we're only drawing line segments here, and our algorithm is assuming infinite line lengths. So the intersection circle is drawn where the two lines would intersect if they were fully visible. Sometimes that point can even be completely off screen. Eventually you run into a couple of real issues though. One problem is when the lines are parallel. In that case, there is no point of intersection. So what gets returned from that function? Try changing the code to make two exactly parallel lines 
and inspect the intersection point object. Additionally, you might have a condition where the two lines are really the same line, or collinear. In that case, there isn't just a single point, but an infinite number of points where the two lines intersect. Try that out and see what the function returns for that point. Okay, next week we'll cover line segments and parallel and collinear lines and get this function seriously beefed up.